Okay, I'm going to do a mid-February overview of Grandma's Farm. And for the last few years, I have been uh, very busy and even operating some stuff in one state and some in another. But now the move is finished. Everything's in one place. There's going to be less neglect because I'm going to be in one place. So just this is blueberries. And last year, oh my gosh, now I have to do a winter pruning on the blueberries. I see spring is springing here as well. We've got lots of blueberries forming, or what will be. I'm going to cut some of those canes. I'll review that in another video. But basically, this has been producing for us for years. Last year, we had a early frost followed by an early, really warm spell, and then more frost. So a bit of it didn't work out last year, even though we covered it. But this year, hopefully, we're not going to have that. Now, I still have nights that are getting into the low 30s. So I still have a lot of stuff um, that are in winter place, <laughs> which I'll tell you about. Now, here's some raspberries. And I definitely have to do some late winter, early spring hair on a lot of things. Raspberries, the grapes, and the blackberries took about three years until I started seeing fruit, and we've been getting fruit from that. Now, here's lilac. I love lilac. Well, okay, you may not eat lilac, but even still, it can attract pollinators as well as me. The grapes also need to get a late winter, early spring pruning. But we got grapes for the first time this last year. We got fruit. And hopefully we'll get bigger and sweeter ones this year. Now, this grouping, I haven't even... I brought up from where I used to live, and I haven't even totally unpacked and put into the garden yet. But what I have here is some uh, pak choy, celery. The celery I love... This particular celery is, let me see if this says what it is. This particular celery is thinner than what you find in the store, but it has much more taste. It's been growing a long time, but I just pick from the outer stalks when I want to make uh, something with celery in it. Let's say if I'm making egg salad or if I'm having chicken wings or something like that. And you can see how it's forming newer stalks uh, from the middle. So it's a cut and come again thing. I don't do a whole thing of celery at once. I just take individual spears and it keeps growing them from the middle. This is spinach. This, I'm not 100% sure. This, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, so you got to try to keep your labels um, with your fruit. Now I got sage here. Last year there was a problem with sage. Uh, we had it in front and I was away a lot, so my husband had it on the sprinkler system. Sage does not like a lot of water. So I got new sage for this year and it won't get as much water. Here's some more bok choy, and strawberries are forming. Yay, hopefully they'll be okay. I think in a couple of nights it's gonna be like 30 degrees for tonight, but I've got, now I had gotten a whole bunch of bare root strawberries last year. They didn't all make it, but a lot of them had pups. Strawberries will put out um, and, and form new plants nearby. Uh, you want to limit the pups earlier in the season as well as in the first year so that you can get a better root system and get uh, bigger, better fruit. But I've got quite a bit that's growing now. This is uh, a brassica. I'm not sure which, but this is definitely a brassica. And to figure out what I have here. Uh, a little bok choy, and you can see that that's a cauliflower. Last year I grew a lot of purple cauliflowers, but this year I'm 
going with white and that's proceeding nicely then i got a brussels sprout over here this my niece had given me about a year ago um you know cutting of um snapdragon and then i had a whole bunch of beautiful snapdragons so that was exciting and they're coming back then over here was the lemon balm and it got really big but went down and now spring is coming back up here's more brassicas uh this looks to be kohlrabi now you want that to be like one to three inches around when you gonna harvest it but that's some kohlrabi i got some kohlrabi right there as well that one's a little more advanced that might be what i had before in that other bed okay now uh i have some asparagus i did harvest one the other day snapped off with a wonderful crunch and it was over 10 inches and six to 10 inches is harvestable. So this is the first year that I'm getting the kind of stalks that you eat. It does take a few years. Here it was like three years before I got the vegetable, but then it self seeds. I originally had one and there was a whole lot in the bed and it's good for 25 to 30 years once it starts giving you food. So that's a lot. I think I have some tarragon over there. I have some um, garlic going over here. And over there, I do have the blackberries. And what was exciting, I have thornless blackberries. And what was exciting about these is everything was in pots. First of all, for portability, but also Georgia clay can be not the best. And here I have where this grew beyond the pot and went right into the Georgia clay. So no more pots for my blackberries. I'll let them just take over this area up to the roses. Beanstalk planters can go like five to seven tiers deep. I have a lot of strawberries in them. They are wonderful for especially drainage. There's a lot of things that were in Hurricane Ian, of my plants in Florida, and the ones that were in the green stalks, such as even potatoes, versus in the regular ways that I grow them, the green stalks did better because of the superior drainage. Uh, this is some tarragon. Ah, here's a uh, strawberry that's forming right here. If I can get it in focus, there we go. The, the white petals come off. And then in the middle, you have the fruit forming. I do have to do some pruning of some strawberry. In the next few days. And my neighbor has a fig tree that does come over my yard and produces figs. They look like they are. The figs are definitely in a formational stage at this point. You can see the shape of the leaves. Now here, I brought this up from Florida, and this is elderberry. Elderberry is very important that you know what you have and what you're doing. I had some experts from the Cooperative Extension and the local university help to identify my elderberry and tell me how to prepare it. If you don't prepare it right, it can be poisonous. If you do, it can really boost your immune system. So elderberry can be wonderful when properly prepared. I've seen some instructions on caring for the plant. My husband just laughed because we had it for over 20 years, didn't do a thing with it. And it just kept on expanding and expanding. So I brought some here that's taken off and I don't think it needs a lot of care. <laughs> but along here, we have some things from my neighbor and over on this chain link fence, and I'm trying to put it in another also, you can see it's all died back. But normally this is taken over by Maypop, which is a cousin of the passion fruit and produces 
beautiful purple flowers. My granddaughter absolutely loves them. And that will just spread and take over your chain link fence. I usually only like to let it go like halfway up the down the fence, like from the from where it starts, I'll have it come up and go across. And under that, I have other things that use the fences trellising, for example, my Malabar spinach. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open this magic door and reveal in a one and a half car detached garage that's also insulated where I put my tropical plants and other plants that don't like Georgia winters during the winter. When it's in the 20s outside, it doesn't get below 50s inside. So here's the overwintering of my tropical plants. Uh, I have uh, a lot of insulin plants. This came up from Florida. Oh, I'm, I, I've got a little bit of the wandering Jews. This came up from Florida. I definitely need to stake it up good here. But basically, this started out in less than a year. It was just a little thing on the bottom. But this is going to be my dragon fruit, because my granddaughter loves it. And with the dragon fruit, it can have multiple uh, uh, fruit fruitings a year once it starts fruiting, which could take a few years. We've got some lemongrass. Here, I just started a couple of weeks ago, maybe not even. What I do with my sweet potatoes and potatoes is I take a former year's leftovers and I put them in to sow the New Year's crop. And what's interesting is I had some that had these things on them. So, you know, I half buried them uh, in moisture and, and dirt. Oh my gosh, I'm getting a number. Oh, yes, I am getting rooting right here. I didn't realize what was going on underneath because I don't see it above. Because the one I had looked at is here. And I saw that this little stub has a number of slips that have roots. So these slips with their roots can be transplanted into individual, like 12 inch uh, area so that they can become big sweet potato plants. And I'll talk a lot more about sweet potatoes in another, another video. Got some lemon trees, some, and three kinds of mint, chocolate mint, spearmint and peppermint. Uh, let's see. That looks to be more of the insulin plants. And I have oregano going on. And some uh, tarragon. More wandering juice. Snake plants. A lot more of the um, insulin plants. Some aloe. You got to have aloe wherever you are. If you t any burn, use aloe. It's much better than an aloe product in the store. I used to buy pineapples and just plant them, uh, the tops. Now, I, I've heard of a new way of doing pineapples that I'm going to be trying as well. But there's also some more aloe. The aloes do make pups, as do the snake plants, as do the banana trees. And I've got lots, I haven't had bananas yet because of some weird weather conditions, but these banana trees do give off pups. And my neighbor had given to me, she's gotten bananas, but I overwinter them in here. And you can see here's a pup growing. And when it's about a foot high, it's when you're supposed to cut it off from the mother and put it in its own pot. So I'm getting lots of banana pups. My neighbor lost a lot of her banana because she didn't have things indoors this winter. So I offered to give her back some banana pups. And here it's already uh, flowering some of the wandering Jews. I got a little aloe in the corner there. This 
is exciting. Um, and this basically is a ponderosa lemon. I have three or four other lemon trees that never did like this. This ponderosa, it's actually a mix between lemon and citron. And it's not old, maybe a little over a year, but the amount of fruit that is forming is amazing. Now, these fruit are supposed to be much larger. They're very tasty. Um, you get a lot of juice out of them. They also have a rough rind, which is supposed to be really good for the um, zest. And I noticed yesterday that I had some flowering. So I tried to hand pollinate one and it came off. So then what I did today, there was another one that was blooming and ready. So I took what came off of another one and put it on there, the pollen. And I got some pollen. So that is definitely pollinated. And I don't really have bees in my shed. Uh, so that helps. But also, uh, it's a way to maximize your crops by hand pollinating a lot of them, uh, especially things like corn and um, curcubits. I'll explain in other videos, but this way you get a better harvest as well. And the only other thing I'll mention is bamboo. Bamboo can be very invasive. A lot of places don't want you to grow it. It bring a bit of it from my old property that's cut, and that way I have lots of material for trellising. And I do trellis a lot of things. A lot of foods do better when they are trellised because you have light and air coming through more, less pests. You might it may look gorgeous in the uh, outside, but then inside you could have stuff not getting the light and air, and it could be damaged. Uh, so that really, here's some more bamboo, but that's usually for my trellising. I have lots of uh, late winter, early spring tasks to do, including amending soils and planting things and taking care of plants. The first thing, I'm working now on shitting potatoes, and I found out I wasn't doing it right. Uh, so I found a better way to chip potato. I wasn't doing it the best way. I found a better way, and I'm going to bring these into the house. And another video, we'll discuss chitting potatoes. Last mention, here's some basil from a few years ago that I haven't done a lot with since, because I've got another basil I like better. But we'll see.